Okay, let's start. Uh, so, uh, I, I would like to open discussion about our kernel build system. Uh, this is a system that we use uh, uh, for uh, managing contribution to the uh, SUSE kernel. Uh, there is uh, uh, well, oh, this way. Uh, there are uh, like your workstations uh, where you uh, produce some patch and you uh, push it uh, to uh, kernel CBS, which runs on Apollonius. Uh, there are some checks that run on your workstation and some checks that uh, uh, Apollonius does. Uh, these checks include uh, applying the patches and trying the, uh, that, it, uh, the, uh, that uh, it can be applied at all, and then trying to build some configurations, not all of them. And when this passes, uh, it sends an email to the branch maintainer uh, that uh, your branch passed test, and they merge it. And uh, once uh, the branch is updated, it's uploaded to OBS, and uh, again, uh, results from building o or in OBS are sent to mailing list and to the maintainers. Uh, there is another thing that is done when the branch is updated. Uh, it is expanded uh, uh, because uh, we manage uh, kernel uh, as a series of patches on top of upstream revision. And uh, uh, there is service that expands this into a tree that you can build directly. Another thing is that uh, uh, in this uh, uh, kernel tree, we have tags that correspond to package releases. And uh, this is done by uh, uh, extracting the RPMs that are put on a uh, uh, mirror somewhere, uh, that they are downloaded uh, by uh, a service on one of these servers, extracted, and there is a node from which uh, Git revision this RPM was built, and it's tagged in the tree. So you know that there is uh, RPM version this and this, and it's, uh, it's a tag in the kernel tree, and it corresponds uh, uh, to the RPM that uh, uh, was released to the customers. And uh, there is, uh, the thing is that uh, uh, currently, uh, the center servers that do uh, most checks are overloaded because they do these ch uh, some uh, some checks. They do the expansion, and uh, uh, we do, uh, there are some times when you can't connect to the Git service on this server because it just doesn't respond, and it usually happens uh, uh, some. Uh, at some time when nobody is around to check it and it's only temporary, so we don't really know uh, what's the cause. Um, so, what we, c uh, we could, of course, spend a lot of time on diagnosing this, but uh, the other thing that we can do, and we, which actually makes sense, is to uh, change how we, how we do things uh, so that the center servers uh, don't do uh, so much stuff for example, the, the kernel expansion isn't uh, like in real time. It, uh, it takes like uh, a few minutes anyway. So if we uh, did that, for example, in the promo engineering cloud, uh, it would uh, maybe be, uh, uh, it, uh, it might be expanded even faster because there are many machines available there and it would uh, decrease the load on the central server. Uh, other thing that, uh, that is not so nice is that uh, uh, the N internal NFS mirrors no longer carry uh, open SUSE packages. So we don't have uh, text for open SUSE kernels because there are no uh, RPMs to extract. Of course, we could use the official mirrors, but they aren't uh, like uh, the official, mi uh, official mi mirrors for open SUSE are not supplied uh, by SUSE. They are supplied by some random people, and we would have to write some script that verifies the signatures uh, on the packages before extracting them and doing stuff with them, which we didn't do before because we had our internal mirror. 
And another weird thing about this is that uh, uh, the build servers, which are in Prague, uh, uh, don't use any kind of uh, scheduling. The central server only uses SSH, SSH uh, to connect to these servers, run the build there, wait for the build to finish, collect the result, and only then it starts testing uh, another revision that needs to be tested. So this could be improved, but, the, other, uh, but uh, the flip side is that this is really simple, so you can always tell which server is failing on which server well, uh, your uh, test was run and stuff like that. If you did some cloud solution, it wouldn't be so easy. So, that's uh, uh, some uh, summary of uh, the stuff this system does. And uh, I hope that uh, you will give some input or or about uh, things that could be done differently or improved or things that don't work. No input, no, uh, no input, no questions. Just a very simple one. Um, I, I think I'm not alone in uh, wanting tags that have the release name in them as well, so that we can do git tag and just see all of the Sleep 15 SP1 kernels at once. Rather than right now, what we have to do is look at every 4.12 tag and see, do git show to see which release it came from. So having tags that have the release name in them would make that a lot easier. Yeah, that could work. Yeah. Well, it's not so trivial because often the tag is uh, like uh, for multiple products, but yeah you could like uh, create five tags, who cares? It still makes it uh, easier to navigate. Uh, it would definitely help because uh, it wasn't such an issue before, but now when we have effectively with OpenSUSE, it would be six uh, different uh, uh, products uh, based on 412, for example, it's becoming quite messy. Yeah. Uh, okay, when we are talking about things that would be nice, uh, one thing that uh, would be really nice for branch maintainers, or not only branch maintainers, would be if there were some way to check how many pull requests are wait for the uh, build hosts. Uh, so to get some idea how long I have, I'm going to wait. May I? Because sometimes it happens that uh, one can wait even for one hour or even more when it's quite busy. So too many people are pushing branches and too, too many branches are queued to be checked. Yeah, there is no complete list because uh, the uh, back front end, uh, which you can uh, see at can CDC uh, 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 only lists uh, one branch at a time. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's really simple script. Uh, so mm, it could do many things better, but it, uh, it would need to be rewritten. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> so um, just one, one note to, uh, to the testing queue. Uh, it's not even fair. I mean, it, uh, it runs in batches. And since it's a shell script, uh, which just does um, um, asterisk expansion, uh, in fact, uh, whatever uh, arrived between those, those two batches is processed in alphabetical order. Like, so if my login name starts with a P, I will come later than someone whose login starts with an A. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so, so that, that would be this, this build test. Um, uh, but another point I was trying, I, I was going to make uh, originally is, uh, well, talking about those checks on Comet. 
this is potentially an issue because, uh, okay, maybe most people do not uh, encounter that, but um, I, as a branch maintainer, <coughs> sometimes get a recheck if my uh, local copy of the upstream Linux repository is out of date, means someone has already committed a patch uh, with a git commit ID that is not available in my copy, right? Um, and if it, if it happens to be from one of the uh, subsystem maintainer uh, repositories, and that repository host is not online at the moment, I have no way to, to continue. Yeah, so um, one thing I was, um, I was um, pondering is, could we have um, an official SUSE clone of the upstream repositories so that uh, anything that you want to commit to this uh, SUSE kernel repo uh, must first be in this uh, official clone so that we are not dependent on external infrastructure. So I think part of Benjamin's talk was that uh, if you don't have a commit in the sorted section that's part of a maintainer branch, it's not an error anymore. No, 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 no. It will not find the upstream commit, and that's that's still an error. No, it's not. It's it, yeah. It doesn't matter. Um, the what we we are, as a branch maintainer we really has to take care of the is only about the upstream Linux tree, and subsystem tree you do not have to sort by yourself. If the series conf appears applicable, then it's fine for the subsystem trees. So if we run a secret patch, uh, yeah, uh, the git sort, uh, thread sort, yeah, yeah. And that's, that's a result what we need. So that on, it doesn't check the subsystem trees by it without, if you don't pass any other options or so. Unless, yeah, unless, mm, yeah. Okay, 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 I, sorry, I but I, I how, how can you resolve a, uh, um, a conflict on merge if you don't have that commit in the, uh, in the topological order? And if you don't have that commit cloned to your system? Yeah, okay, that, that's a another question, yeah. <laughs> right. Um, perhaps to reply to what uh, Jeff said about the changes. So the difference is that if one commit is not found and that subsection cannot be resorted, but the other sections can still be, or the other subsections can still be sorted. But there, there is an error nevertheless. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, it still reports an error. And I, I think what uh, Peter suggested to have an official clone is, is perhaps, uh, yeah, the right way to go. Because as you say, if the upstream repository goes offline for some reason in between when the original person committed that and uh, the branch maintainer wants to use it, then there's really no other option than to bypass the, the commit check, the local commit check. Thank you. I, I wonder if we could also somehow help the issue of um, an upstream commit being rebased and getting a different commit ID which also happened to me many times. So at the time someone backported that patch, it was okay. And then uh, a few days later, uh, when I tried to do that, uh, and, and when I uh, refreshed my, uh, my Git uh, repository clone, uh, that commit ID, the original commit ID is no longer there. So it does not get cloned. It's, it was just, maybe it was even pruned and I think the solution to that is uh, in, in part to use this, this new version of series sort which can check only, well, which can work on subsections individually and to improve the commit check so that it only verifies subsections that have been changed by the commit that it's checking. Which only helps if I don't get a conflict in that subsection. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in that case, well, yeah, you can't have your cake and eat it as well. If you want to change the subsection and check that it's valid, then yeah, you, you yeah, need the and, right and actually, that's the missing, the lack of the git commit and the server side, that, that's because of that we have no, so, for example, series so check in the cables. Yeah. 
Well, you could uh, like uh, check not only the hash, but you could check uh, patch content, but uh, somebody would have to write uh, the code for that, and it's questionable how uh, time consuming it would be. Yeah. Yeah, it was already pointed out. I forgot the name exactly, but there is something in, in Git already to uh, identify patches by content. Uh, maybe if someone remembers the name, like, because we, patch ID, is that? Yeah. So, but that that needs extra work as well, but then to build some kind of da database of patches by content. Um, but again, that that's just a building block and more work is needed. I think the current problem, yeah, the, uh, apart from the patch sorting stuff, the, from maintenance point of view, the current the, the problem is that uh, sometimes it takes very long until we get a build test result. And so you said that about uh, so build test multiple, multiple servers, can we extend more easily in the current infrastructure or do we need to introduce Kubernetes or something? <laughs> well, as it is, uh, in most cases, uh, we build four architectures and we have four servers for that. So we don't need more unless you are building Tumbleweed or um, uh, some other thing that needs uh, many architectures. So um, adding servers is not going to uh, make things m much faster. Unless you also improved on the scheduler so that you could run uh, several checks in parallel. Uh, yeah, that's it. And at that point, we would probably switch to something that is all, I mean, we, I don't want to reinvent the wheel. Uh, we would definitely not be the first ones to need such scheduling. And uh, yeah, like if you're only talking about uh, future of cable, okay, this part of cable might be replaced by something else. That sounds easy one. Uh, I, do you have a proposal? Like, um, I have looked around at uh, the available options, and none of them looked very appealing. Like, um, either it's um, it's uh, overkill, um, or it's uh, written, or it's unmaintained. It has been unmaintained for a few years, or is written in an esoteric language that no one wants to um, support. Okay, I know that Java is not esoteric, but for kernel hackers, you know, like, uh, do we have volunteers who would be willing to find and fix bugs in a Java code? Okay, yeah, so <laughs> don't see any hands. So yeah, I mean, if you want to start that discussion, I'll glad to join in because it's not so easy. Well, Java is still better than Perl. Sure, sure. You also have to consider how much of your time is worth reinventing something new when something already exists. Because why, why reinvent the wheel? You're just, you're just basically setting your time on fire for, for no reason, just over an ideological debate. Well, but some, uh, somebody has to find the wheel that already exists. Uh, that costs time too. And apparently it's not like so easy as to uh, do a few searches on Google and yeah, let's use this because yeah, the, the, the thing is, um, the solutions that do scale are, uh, and, and are still maintained want to model the infrastructure their way. And the transition what, what, from what we have today uh, to something else is non-trivial, let's put it that way. Um, means, yeah, of course, we could, we could just change this part of the equation, like push, no, uh, we, we, we've got GitLab internally, so you could just make a pull request in GitLab. Yeah, we, and, and I can see that some people don't like that idea. <laughs> but why? And then we could, we could attach something in, in GitLab, so you, you, you can have uh, a test run attached to a pull request in GitLab. So when, before you merge, you can already see the results. And it can be scripted. I mean, GitLab is, is pretty scriptable. 
<laughs> that everything is so great, yeah. <laughs> but uh, that re reminds me that what currently we are completely missing is a uh, CI that is. Um, so the KBuild just builds, and that's all. And yeah, that's prepared, expanded tree, and so on, but it's, hmm? this? Yes, there is a package build, uh, the OBS, uh, kernel OBS QA, and that, but just building in package, and yeah, it checks uh, boot or not, that's, that's all. And not even on all architectures. Um, well, anyway, it, um, it, it's even worse than that. So if you, if you look at those uh, build, uh, build hosts, um, they build the kernel in a very special environment that's not used anywhere else. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, the kernel does not have so many dependencies on external libraries and stuff, so uh, we've been able to get away with it, except in some cases uh, where uh, the build only fails in, in vpath, I believe, yeah, like in, if, you, if you build it in a subdirectory as it is done in the build service, because I believe um, we build entry on those build servers, right? Yeah, so there's some difference and sometimes it works in one and fails in the other. Right, and, 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 and I don't even know if that is dependent on the, uh, on the product or if all products build in a subdirectory. Well, it depends on the RPM scripts, and they are not, no longer merged to CD11. So yeah, it might be different per, per product. Yeah, OK, OK. Um, yeah, so, so for starters, I, I suggest we fix that and, and just uh, build in a subdirectory always. That's the easy part. Uh, but in, in, in general, the thing is, we are build testing something that's different from what we get in the final build. So. We, we still occasionally get build failures uh, when it's uploaded to, to the IBS. And the main, the, the main reason was we wanted to introduce as little overhead as possible so that we can do the build test fast. I mean, there is nothing, I mean, the, the only thing that prevents uh, doing this build test in the IBS is that it would take too long. You would wait for, uh, for the confirmation of your pull request for a day or maybe a couple of days. And that's not acceptable. Could we, <coughs> excuse me, couldn't we more or less solve that problem using containers the same way that Benjamin That does would have testing? been my question as well, Jeff. If, <laughs> anyone contra if anyone volunteers to maintain those container images, yes, sure. Well, the issue is that uh, we also have a problem with updating the configs because it started to depend on what exact GCC tool chain the developer submitting that change actually has installed. Yeah, another good reason to maintain official container images for cable, or for kernel development, let's put it that way. Um, it's just that I don't want to do that myself. I'm already pretty loaded. Um, there's a disconnect between well, I mean, yeah, you can you can install. I mean, you can set up the same environment as as here pretty easily. Just add a repository, this kernel devil, and install a few packages. I may even create a meta package. Meta package. The, the the trouble is, I don't like this environment. Yeah, I would like to get a real SLE 15 in environment, for example, and use the GCC that comes from uh, SLE 15 with all the other uh, settings that are specific to SLE 15, rather than trying to, you know, like, make one universal environment that can fit all, if you set up the build properly. Okay. I, I, I'm beginning to think that parts of this are going really far into the overkill land, and that it's asking for an unreasonable amount of work that might well be involved in. I take the GCC version and regeneration your configs, make a post, config or a post commit git hook that calls said on it and reverts it back before finalizing the diff. Um, that would take slightly less time than maintaining containers for every family we release over time. And if it comes down to if that if for the test servers or, or the build servers that he uses 
Again, why would we maintain loads of different container images and all of the rest of it when you could just redeploy the machines using PXE? It would take longer in terms of physical time, but it would take way, way, way less in terms of a person's time. And I think a person's time is more, va more valuable in a lot of, way, a lot of ways. Because we're talking about testing the for next branch for a person. And while they might like to see the immediate feedback that everything is OK, they have finished that block of work. If it takes a few hours, it's not going to ruin their day. So I, I think we're beginning to overkill things and pushing more stuff onto Michael than he really deserves or needs right now. So I had two comments. I think the way to solve the GCC issue is we have another fragment that just gets edited separately by somebody who is maintaining that part of the config. And then it just overwrites it when we build and we don't care. Um, but in terms of having the container images, we should have container images for all our releases anyway, don't we? So, that, I mean, I'm not, nobody's talking about building them from scratch. It's take a, an image file that already, or a, a Docker file, or whatever you want to call it, that already exists and just add the tools that we need to it. And that's just a bunch of zipper commands. So that's not as if we're reinventing the wheel to do this. I mean, somebody needs to volunteer to do it, which is, I think, the, the hard part right now. But I don't, it's not as if we're going to be creating all these images from scratch. And OBS has pipelines for automatically making those containers and updating them over time. So you can actually have your kernel tools container and that Docker file in there. And then when anything happens to the base image or those packages, it will trigger the rebuilds in those containers, which then, of course, will then be redeployed and flow into whatever other infrastructure you have further down the pipeline. Also, it's um, 5 o'clock, so I think the session probably is, is at the end. <laughs> Uh, am I overestimating the effort uh, it takes without the compiler version, or are you underestimating it? Um, it's more than just the line at the top. Depending on the compiler version that you used to make the config will influence the choices that you have depending on the compiler features. And these in turn may uh, in, uh, influence other choices that you have. So it's not that trivial. Yeah, it's, uh, it's actually even worse. Uh, and it's getting worse with each new upstream version since 417 or if there's uh, yeah. I know the problem that is this day uh, today the config uh, does not reflect uh, is no longer a pure config file dot config it also uh, holds config options which actually describe the build environment and these do depend not only on gcc version mm. But they also depend on GCC capabilities and also depend on architecture. And what's worse, other config option, and not only their values, but also their availability, depend on these environment of, uh, config options. Exactly. So essentially, the only way to get uh, correct config today is to use uh, the correct GCC version, well, there are no differences now to me, for example, between GCC 7 and 8, but there are differences, for example, between GCC 7, which we have in 3.15 and open source versus 3.0.2.1, and GCC 9 from Tumbleweed. And there are differences between architectures. So today, uh, what I'm using personally is uh, that I, uh, I'm using cross compilers. We modified the run old config to use cross compilers if available. and to be able to uh, refresh configs on both 3.15 SP2 and uh, master. Uh, I also need uh, to be able to run uh, this thing in master, which is something I'm using a special directory uh, that I change root into, and that is managed with zipper dash dash root refresh. Uh, but it's something that is uh, not uh, not really appealing to be used by everyone. Um, I've been thinking about this for some time. Uh, there are two solutions I can see and need, uh, ne neither of them is easy or simple or nice. One is something I would call a run all config as a service, which means we would have some environment when people, uh, where, uh, which people could use for refreshing them, uh, their configs rather than running in door on their own machines. Or maybe if someone is able to do, uh, prepare Docker images for that, we could use Docker. 
uh, well, I'm not able to do that at the moment. Uh, second is uh, some idea that uh, I would like to submit upstream when I find time to implement it for real, which would be uh, to improve uh, the tool which is behind all those make something config uh, to with new two new features. One would be uh, exporting all environment config options, which means uh, all config options which are actually uh, whose values are identified by running some test on the system, exporting to into a separate file. And second option which would allow using this file as override when running make old config, make menu config and so on. So that rather than running these tests, the values would be taken from this file. So then we could provide these override files for our products and use them whenever someone wants to update the configs locally. But, uh, well, the main drawback with this solution is that someone would have to sit down and uh, implement it. Okay, actually, thanks for reminder. Um, I forgot all those build servers at the bottom of this slide are standard x86 machines, and we are using cross compilers, uh, which, yeah, w w which is an issue because we don't have proper cross compilers. Some of the tests that are done in this uh, or make con <coughs> sorry make config uh, require that uh, the the compiler can actually produce binaries for the target architecture. And we are missing a few bits there. I think cross glibc is missing, but we also do not package live GCC, which might be fixed. I mean, that's a minor thing. But the cross glibc may be an issue, right? Uh, fortunately, there is uh, progress on this, uh, starting with, I don't know if 5.2 or 5.3 kernel. Uh, there is new uh, config option, well, config option in quotes. Uh, CC can link and other things that depend on uh, uh, compiler being able to link are uh, depending on this one. Uh, at the moment there is only one, but there are plans to introduce others. It's BP filter UM, UMH. So we can override this one option and uh, uh, that's this what issue. we are actually doing at the moment is that uh, we set this CC can link to yes, unconditionally, but uh, well, it's it's not perfect solution, it's a workaround for the time being. Yeah, yeah another funny thing about this uh, config option is that uh, uh, in upstream, uh, config options uh, that have the default value are not saved. And if the uh, default value depends on GCC capabilities, you don't know what value the option had. It's not saved uh, uh, neither when it's enabled nor when it's disabled. So you have config and you don't know what options the kernel was built with. Yeah, and also back to the cached results, I'm actually wondering if we enable another configurations in the kernel, if it actually do make files could run in other tests which might not be actually cached because they were not enabled before, so maybe the caching. Yeah, that will probably, probably produce an error and you will have to update the, uh, the cached results if, yeah, you, if, if you use that. So, so maybe the caching is even not enough. I, I know that last week on Plumbers that there were some discussion about that even other distributions would need some better support for snippets of configurations, but there was no like real conclusion how to do it and any about any framework for this and stuff like this. But just then we are not alone in this. So. Yeah, and yeah. Yeah, the, the thing with uh, uh, Docker uh, images, yeah, you can build a Docker image for uh, 315 on ARM, but where you, uh, where you run it, uh, you won't have like uh, the ARM machine to run it on use cross compilers currently and we, if we switch to docker images well I don't know how, how we will build it 
Yeah, but then it will not really be 315 anymore. Uh, you can run it in, in QMU, but I mean, we have some ARM64 servers as well. Mm, not really, really few. A few is, <laughs> well, yeah, uh, yeah uh, you can run it on QMU. Yeah, I mean, yes, sure you can uh, run it fully emulated, and at that point maybe it's faster to upload it to the IBS and wait for the results. Um, now, <laughs> uh, yeah, but like uh, one thing that that I wanted to mention when someone, uh, was it Jeff, said that we are only talking about for next blocking one person? That's not entirely true. I mean. Uh, when I merge, and the merge is non-trivial, uh, I will also push to for next. And it's kind of blocking everyone until the, uh, the, the, the product branch gets updated. So, yeah, so one minor request maybe, uh, that's whether we can get a kernel, new kernel warning as a build test. We can check that. So that you get a g build test without and success or not, <laughs> but it doesn't include the kernel warning, uh, the new warning that you introduced by the new commits, right? Um, I, I'll try to extend, um, yeah, okay. It, it refers to a real world example. So there was um, a mistake in a backported patch, uh, which uh, would have been easily found if we saw the new warning, but that's right. not uh, available as part of the of this build test output uh, because all the the output is pretty noisy, so it's just uh, redirected to dev null, and it would only be found after merge. Yeah. Okay. Okay, 